All right, we're going to get started on the next chapter. It's going to be chapter 12 on somatic senses. When we're taking a look at some senses, we're looking at certain things we need to bring in. Now, when we went through the nervous system, we understood that there are three main concepts to the that system, that being sensory, integrative, and motor. Now, in order to bring in the information to the brain spinal cord where we can interpret that message and then eventually send it out via a motor neuron to a gland or a muscle, we have to land on a particular sites. So now we're going to look at some of these particular sensors or receptors. Now, what are they? They are going to be specialized cells or multi-celled structures that are going to collect information. They're, think of it as a little landing site. Now, those landing sites are going to vary based upon what it's going to be stimulated by, whether it be in touch, temperature, pain, light, so on and so forth. What they're going to do, they're going to stimulate the neuron to send the impulse to the brain. Now, its job is to find a way to get that impulse. Remember, the sense is going to go to the brain and spinal cord, and then motor is going to be going away from the brain and spinal cord. Now, these are the five different types of receptors that we're going to be looking at right away for sensory receptors, so things that are going to typically be found in the surface of the skin. One of those are going to be the chemoreceptors. They're going to respond to different chemicals. Now, the common thing you might think of the chemoreceptor are those in your nose. So if somebody walks past you, you can smell the different chemicals and the aromas that may be on them based upon their cologne or the perfume. Those chemoreceptors are stimulated with inside their nasal cavity and they transfer up to their uh, olfactory bulbs in their brain where it can travel then to the posterior portion or region of the brain where you can interpret that sense of smell. Other receptors you might know of all too well are pain receptors. Those are going to respond to tearing or damage within the fascia or even below uh, tissue damage. Thermal receptors, like thermometer, change in temperatures of heat. Uh, whether they get too hot or too cold, we have different receptors typically are going to be found in areas where there's going to be a lot of capillaries. Mechanical receptors are going to deal with movement, uh, mechanical forces, so we're going to find these most of these in tendons and ligaments due to the movement that's going to be taking place. And then the last ones are the photoreceptors, which are going to be found in the eyes. Those are going to be the rods and cones. All right, take a look at what an impulse is. Sensory impulse is a stimulation of a receptor causes local change in its membrane. Think of this in a big fancy way of once I put my hand on a hot burner, if I have a stimulus, it's got to land on there. As soon as I have enough of an impulse to start a reaction, if you can remember what that was, that was we call the threshold stimulus. That threshold stimulus is a minimum amount of stimuli needed to start the chain reaction that will take place to allow for the impulse to travel to the central nervous system. What's going to happen is that we are going to start to see a electrical current is generated. That electrical current, remember the flip-flopping, the polarization, depolarization, repolarization of the electrical impulse with inside of that uh, axon of the neuron. If the receptor of the neuron is portion of the potential may be generated, the action potential. If it's not part of the neuron, the receptor potential may be transferred to another neuron. Remember that one neuron within inside the central nervous system and or in the peripheral can make up to 10,000 different connections to other neurons. So if it's not directly connected to the one neuron that's going to make the pathway, it's going to jump to that one that's needed. Okay, peripheral nerves are going to transmit those to the central nervous system. One of the vocab terms that you're going to see down here in the bottom is a sensation. Why do we call them senses? A sensation is what we actually feel when our brain interprets that impulse. So the feeling that occurs when your brain actually interprets the impulse. So when you walk by and you have that smell that you smell from something, whether somebody's making cookies or if you smell the pizza or the crab rangoons that I think are going to happen this week in Radke's room, uh, if you're smelling that, you know what that triggers in your brain that might trigger in terms of Pavlov what a dog would do with the saliva that's going to be secreted um, whatever your brain is going to start to do next understanding what's happening based upon those those sensations and so then those sensations will then be used to interpret then our brain functioning uh, from here on out now when we used to a sensation so if it is crab ragoons or egg rolls or whatever it is that's being made, you understand your body, your brain actually goes through the sensory adaptation after a little while. What that is is an adjustment. 
you get used to something happening. As you get used to it for a long period of time, you kind of foreshadow. You don't think about it anymore. Um, think, for example, you're sitting in, in behind home plate in a ball game. Um, what that means, like a baseball game. You're going to have some sort of a chain link fence in front of you or some sort of netting. Eventually, you get to the point where you see through that. You don't realize that, yes, it might have been an obstruction the first two or three minutes when you're there, but eventually you start seeing through that you look past it, just like your nose. You're looking past your nose. Can you look and see your nose? You should, but you can look past it. Now, go and do another example that you guys really well know well, your sporting events. You guys in the very back of the bus like to pass gas. You know, at that point, as you pass gas, it stinks, but after five minutes, Everybody smelt it. You're used to the smell. But as you leave, get off the bus, you go grab something at, at the gas station, you come back on, that smell's still there. Okay. All it really comes down to is your nervous system getting used. You get adapted to that actual sense that was taking place. Some other senses that we're going to find in association with, these are going to be ones that are going to be located mostly in the viscera, or in the, in the skin. So in somatic senses, there are three different types that we're going to look at. These ones are going to be in the, the skin portion. They're going to be located in tendons and ligaments, dealing with like more mechanical receptors, and then in organs. So external receptive are going to sense touch, touch, pressure, temperature, pain. Appropriate receptive are going to be dealing with changes in muscles and tendons. So again, mechanical receptors. And visceral, you might have some pain receptors and visceral receptive. But again, this dealing with organs. Now, in your lab today that you're going to be looking at, you're going to be doing a lab with touch and pressure senses. There are three different types of touch receptors that are going to be located within the skin. The first of those are the free nerve endings. And if you can think of our epithelial cells there, we have our dermal layer starting here. These guys are actually going to be right up to the top, almost to the top. So, you know, if you skin any, you dive on the gym floor in a basketball game and all of a sudden you get a nice burn, you get that sensation, that pain that's happening in there. Those are the free nerve endings that are going to start to be stimulated. Those are the same type of free nerve endings in a cavity that gets stimulated if something too cold if you have a cavity. Okay? Those things sense the pain. Below that you have two different corpuscles, Meisner's and Pepsinium. The Meisner's corpuscles are going to be abundant in hairless regions. Think the bottom of your feet. Very, very sensitive to touch. Another place you might see it, take a look down at your wrist. The back side of your wrist, there's no hair. Hairless region, very sensitive to touch, light touch. Pepsinian, all over the body, deep subcutaneous in the dermal layer, detects heavy pressure. So on the next slide, showing you an illustration of that. But take a look down. Here we have an illustration of the skin. This is all the dead layer of the skin that we have on there at the top. Remember, this is our our stratified squamous epithelial. Down below, this guy here is a free nerve ending. So if I take a look at our picture, this free nerve ending actually travels all the way up through the epithelial layer up to the top so we can get the sensations of that pain. Below that, right still near, fairly near the surface, is this next corpuscle. That corpuscle there is the Meisner's corpuscle. And what its job is, again, is light pressure. So if somebody's pushing on it, and again, typically in here in these regions, you start to get some sort of a change, and once that threshold is stimulated, that impulse is then going to travel down the nerve pathway until it reaches the main nerve of the peripheral nervous system, and then it gets sent off to then the central nervous system where you can interpret that somebody is touching you with that sense of a heavy pressure. Deeper to that, then, you have your other corpuscles, like this guy here, which is your capsidian, it's going to take much more of a pressure to be able to get down deep within the dermal layer. Okay. Again, external receptive, so it's going to be found within the skin. You're looking at then the differences in temperature. Thermal receptive. You will, for your test, want to know your degree C's here, okay? your degree Celsius. Now, in terms of our warm temperatures, we are going to see temperatures between 25 and 45 degrees C. That's when we get the sensation of feeling warm. So in the 77, oops, 77 to 113 degrees Fahrenheit, that's when we get the sensation of being warm. 
we get fold between 10 and 20. So from 50 to 68, we get fold. Below 50 and above 113, it's got either too hot or too cold that it is going to start stimulating the pain. Now, the scary thing is the pain receptor can take place and you can undergo sensory adaptation. Now, you guys have been outside when it's below 50 degrees Fahrenheit, you're outside without a coat on, so you don't feel like you're very cold. So you're in 30, 32 degrees, your skin becomes gets so used to being at that temperature that pain receptors are starting to take place and you could undergo shock or hypothermia at a much quicker rate, again, because you're not realizing the pain that's actually taking place with inside of those receptors. Now, the pain that we do get can be widespread, right? Pain is all over the place. Three nerve endings are going to be traveling throughout the skin. Not only there, we also see it in the viscera, in the organs. Uh, but visceral pain is not well localized. What that means is that I may have pain in, say, my appendix, but not necessarily do I only feel in my lower right hand quadrant. I might feel it in my back. Uh, if I had a gallbladder attack, maybe I have gallstones. Not only do I feel it in my abdomen, but I also feel it in my neck. I feel like I slept wrong on a pillow. It's always going to be based on traveling the nerve pathways. What is one of the common signs if somebody's having a heart attack? They're gripping their left arm really tightly because that pain is going to be traveling down their left arm. Now, again, sense of pain comes through three nerve endings. They're all over the body. Uh, one thing that does lack is the brain. The central nervous system does lack pain receptors. So if you've ever watched a Grey's Anatomy or if you've seen Hannibal, that talk about or are they doing dissections on the brain, most times you're going to see brain surgeons operate on somebody that is alive. Uh, well, hopefully they're all alive, but awake. And when they're awake, they're able to identify what areas of the brain they may be having issues with. Okay. Move on to this slide. This slide you will be seeing again. Uh, you will see this on your diagram for the test. We're going to still have our stimulus. It's going to be traveling through the sensory neuron. You will be labeling ganglions. And what they refer to are uh, different pathways that may be coming in. Okay, it's more of a relay station. Eventually going into the interneurons, brain and spinal cord, and then back out the motor neurons. And on the test, I would like you to, you're going to kind of get rid of these arrows. Okay, that it's going to come into and then go out to the motor neuron, which is going to be on the heart itself. Now, this will be the last slide that we're going to be looking at today before you guys start your lab. It is on referred pain. This referred pain, this is what we just talked about, how organ pain is not well localized. So there's my gallbladder attack. Not only do I feel it there, but I also feel it in my neck. Okay? By looking at heart pain, not only do I feel it in the center of my heart, but I also feel it all the way down the arm. If I'm suffering from kidney stones, look at all the areas that I may be suffering from kidney pain. Okay? So, when you're... If you're a doctor, you get to the point where you're a doctor and somebody comes in with some abdominal pains, why do they always touch you in certain areas that it feels it hurts, it's pressure? It's like different things they have to try to narrow down because of organ pain. They can't see it right away. They have to get some of the signs and symptoms down and identify what areas and nerve pathways that these things typically take. Okay, we'll stop there for the notes for you guys for today. You guys can go ahead and start up then on your lab with a sense of touch. Uh, once that is done, you guys will be watching a video, uh, the discovery video on sensation. All right.